Hi guys, today I'm going to look at some grinders and some common issues that I come across that happen to these and see if we can fix them up. I've got a big box here. We go through a lot of these at work, so got a lot of candidates. We'll see if uh, we can find all of those issues and see if we can get some of these guys going. All right, so this first guy has a pretty obvious one broken cord. So you see a lot of those, either it breaks here or it breaks here and guys using it, it kinks, wires break inside or they just get cut off. So we'll change that cord and we'll see what the next problem is. All right, so I've got the new cord made up. Actually, it's just an old cord that had some damage. I cut off the bad stuff. We keep reusing these till they're about this short. So I put a new connector on black wire. The white wire is just going to screw in and we're going to install that right now. All right, so while I have this one open, I'm going to talk about the second issue I find. It's a broken switch. So I've got the switch here. This one feels pretty good. I don't know how these break. Sometimes they just wear out, but other times just from being dropped or something, they break. So we're gonna test this guy, see if it needs to be changed. So you just grab your multimeter, throw it on resistance, fairly high range. We're gonna clip it on here. One clip on the bottom. One clip on the top, put that in there. Hopefully you can see that. So we've got unlimited resistance now. I flip the switch, you get zero, so no resistance. So that switch works fine. So no need to change it. You did have to change it. It's just one more screw. Once you have the cord off, unscrew that, put the new switch on, you're good to go. All right, so the next issue that you'll see a lot of is worn brushes, obviously. Your machine gets used a lot. So on the Makita, they're really easy to change. Right here, so you just remove this cover. Pops out and uh, yeah, there's your problem. There's absolutely no brush left on this. There's the rest of it. Yeah, that guy was definitely due for some brushes. These grinders work hard. Your welder or fabricator, it's probably your number one tool aside from your welder. Yeah, that one was done too. All right, well, let's see if I can find some spares for that and we'll get those put in. Yeah, it's tricky. And the cover goes on, and these covers are nice. If you do strip one side, you can flip them over and use the other side. All right, so now we're just gonna have a look at the commutator, 
Let's see what kind of damage there is on that before I put some new brushes in there. And it's not pretty, unfortunately. There's definitely some scoring on there. That's probably why those old brushes wore out so fast. So I'm probably gonna have to take this one apart and clean that up before putting some new brushes in. So we'll go over that in the next step. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the uh, commutator. We're gonna clean that up and we'll check the bearing while we're inside there. You can feel a little bit of slack in the gearbox, but it's not too bad considering how old this is. So first take the handle off. And we don't need to take the guard off, but it's easier with it over the way. And now there's four screws to take the gear off. Now just give it a pull, pull it straight out. Be careful not to scratch anything inside. Everything looks pretty good in there. Check this bearing, that feels pretty good. Feel the other bearing, oh, nice and tight, so that's in good shape. No real damage here. These marks are just from balancing, it's not damage. And now we're gonna look at the uh, commutator here. So we'll just clean that up. Got a little piece of sandpaper here. This is pretty fine stuff, I think a thousand grit. I don't want to scratch it up too much. I just want to take off any roughness, any rust, and any junk that might be in there. This is a, the old brush. So, very little pressure. Just clean it up, mix it, move it again. So the other brush won't wear out too quickly. And I'm going in the same direction that the commutator turns so that it'll also not create any marks to wear out those brushes too quickly. And it's turning nice shiny copper color as it gets cleaned up, which is good. Actually it's not nearly as damaged as I thought it was. It's just dirty. All that carbon and the brush stuck on there. All right, so another important point is to take a pick or a small screwdriver and clean in between each of these segments on the uh, commutator. And the reason why is because the old carbon brush can get in there and build up and it's a metal all kinds of gunk can get in there and it can cause shorting or arcing and that will give you all kinds of trouble so you want to get in there and clean it real good each one of these yeah that looks pretty good now since i have this out just gonna take a quick look at the armature windings. Make sure everything still looks good there. No real damage. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna reinstall that now. There's a little metal flange here that only goes on one way, so if it does turn on you, just keep rotating it. There's only four different ways it goes. Make sure it's lined up properly. There's little tabs for it to fit in. Again, that's just this Makita model. It'll be different for every other model. So before I install that armature, I think it would be a good time since this is uh, feeling a little loose here to uh, check the gearbox grease and maybe add some if we need it. So if you just gently wiggle that out, the uh, Gearbox should come right off that armature. We'll wipe off some of this old grease and dirt. Good chance to check the bearing at the same time. 
Yeah, that grease is in rough shape. It is pretty much just cement. We'll clean that off good. Yeah, real good shape. As you can see in here, what kinds of gunk huh? you probably can't see. So we'll take the other cover off. There, that was fun. All right, so this cover should come right off. Got two gears and oof, that is not nice green color. That's supposed to be yellow. Right. Well, it's not as chunky as I thought it would be. This is just very, there's very little left on the gear. All right, so yeah, there's very little left on the gear, but. Think about how fast that spins with centripetal force. Makes sense. It all just gets flung off. All right, that's still in real good shape. Hmm, that would be more worn. All right, so now add some grease. And you want to use high temp grease because this thing gets pretty hot. So just in that cavity. Yeah. And wipe some right on the gear. Make sure it's in there. I don't know how long it will stay on there, but it's worth a shot. A little bit will help. That looks good. All right, so everything's back together. I'm ready to test it. So we'll give it a try. Sounds pretty good. Now, any of those parts that we were looking at, you can buy online. Almost everything's replaceable in these, better than like the cheap stuff that you buy like for home use, tiny little grinders. These are pretty good and there's other brands that have good stuff as well, but this is what I've been using for years. Well, I hope some of you guys found this video helpful. Um, I have to say, even if you follow all of these steps, uh, your grinder could be damaged beyond repair, but uh, sometimes it's worth going through and seeing if you can fix it yourself rather than sending it off to be fixed or scrapping it. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, click like and please subscribe so you can see future videos. Thanks a lot.